When I was 11 years old, I used to run 7 to 10 kilometers every day, trying to run my fastest time as I have before, just trying to beat that record that I've always had. Um, showing up every day at the starting line, some days I threw up, naive, I was super naive, I mean, um, you know, just trying to focus unaware of the possibilities of reaching greatness. I was showing up every day um, because I had a race to run. I came 42nd out of 10,000 people in India at the age of 11 and uh, realized soon after that it was my pursuit of victory that got me there, not the victory itself because I'd never won before. Um, fast forwarding to when I was 14 years old is when I started playing football. Um, playing a sport that I'd never tried before for the first time ever, I went to try out. I got picked by a club team. That's always the rank higher than the provincial team. And I made it, right? Shy and quiet and super introverted. I was just trying to show by training and play. I started enjoying it. Um, first year, two months into playing a fresh sport, I was playing the national championship where I scored the highest number of goals and got the top scorer award. Now, I'm, it's a team sport and I'd never done team sports before because I used to run long distance by myself. It was tough and everybody was like, who's this new kid who's just here and scoring all the goals and what's happening? Um, year number two, I beat my own record and I was the top scorer again. Um, year three, fast forward, MVP, get called by the national team at 16 and, and I'm there. You know, it's just, um, it's the national team now, it's the big games, it's, it's everything's great. I was making 300 rupees a day being at the national team. And until four years ago, I was still making 300 rupees a day being on the national team. So much hasn't changed, but I've tried. Um, okay, here we go. It's the anxiety again. Jeez. I'm just going to take a sip of water. Shit, you could hear that. Okay, I'm on the national team now, and I'm 16, and I'm playing, and we're competing. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's different when you're standing amongst a thousand people at the starting line of a long distance race and when you're standing on the foreign grounds with uh, your teammates on the national team with the flag on your chest, tears streaming down your face, you don't know what's happening, you know, there's, there's, um, there's passion running, there's, there's passion running in your blood and, and you don't know what's, it's, it's ridiculous, I can feel it right now, I have goosebumps. Um, it's, it's a different ball game when you're there and when how you do or how you perform depends on where your country will be ranked. You know, yesterday somebody asked me if I was patriotic. Come on, man. I'm playing on the national team. I have to perform and win. I am patriotic. I love my country. Um, but yeah, what it takes is, I'll fast forward. Now I'm playing. I've played on the national team for three years and um, four years. Now I get called on the, on the Maldivian for the Maldivian League. I was playing there, I played there for a year, um, first season, and um, that's when I was made vice captain at 18. Um, now this is only two years into playing football uh, for the country, but four years playing football altogether. Um, I'm vice captain now, and obviously it came to me as quite a surprise because I was always focused on performance, you know, I was always focused on Getting, getting the highest number of goals, uh, being top of the line athlete, you know, being mo just, just being and playing just my heart out because at that point nothing mattered. You know, it didn't matter uh, what I had studied, didn't matter how old I was, didn't matter anything. I just wanted to play, play my heart out, right? So um, another year in Maldives, I'm 20 now. And um, so that's two seasons in Maldives where I was also top performer in their league and now they make me my captain. I'm 20 years old. I started running at 11. Um, I'm the captain now, what's up? Now, that's when I kind of knew that the ball game has changed entirely. The, the purpose of me being in a place that I was, was absolutely, um, you know, just so different. Um, because now I'm in a place to lead, right? I'm not in charge of anybody. I'm in charge. I'm right back. I'm responsible for those in charge because you know once you start feeling like you're in charge, you don't you don't have the um, you know you don't boss around. You it's 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 different to be a vulnerable leader, to be a leader that people can confide in on field and off the field. There's so many things. You know, I started I started uh, taking more than my share of blame and like. Uh, less, less of my share of credit. I mean, it's, it's personal sacrifices that come in every day. 
Um, playing in the Maldives, captain of the national team, everything's going great, truly, truly living the dream. Two years later, or a year later, January 2016 is, after a great training session, is when I find myself broken down on the floor. Now, I couldn't breathe, shallow breaths, literally, literally expelling sighs. Um, the world was caving in, everything is closing in, fears that I could not describe. Um, it was, it was, it was a first, obviously, but it was different. The next morning was absolutely different and difficult. Usually, you know, the alarm rings, I leap out of bed, ready for training, excited. Today, my body was just not responding. I'm trying to make sense of things, but I cannot think straight. It's like somebody or somebody is pushing me down in, in, in the bed and, uh, well, eventually it got better, but it was quite temporary that it got better. Um, it's two years of trying to figure out what's happening and uh, actually something really, really, really important also happened then. A couple of months after I had this breakdown, um, I lost my best friend and teammate um, to a car accident, which makes me weak till today. Uh, Shalila, we used to play on the national team together. We used to play on the club team together. Um, you know, when you're, when you're teammates, it's not like you're just friends from college or anything. You spend months together. You're waking up at 4 a.m. together. You're, you're, it's through thick and thin, you know. It's, it's, it's like family. It's more than family. Um, what is blood, anyway? Um, so I lost them. You know, I was on my flight uh, to the funeral, which was the longest of my life. Uh, is also when I found out that my family had gone bankrupt. Um, you know, following, following the, the, the events that, that I mean, this, this phase that I was going through, um, I started spending a lot of time by myself, um, a lot of time by myself. I started questioning the purpose of it all, of, of why I was doing what I was doing or what, what, what the need was anyway. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I hit some very low lows where I, I didn't want to wake up the next morning. Um, I didn't care about playing anymore. I didn't want to exist. I didn't want anything to do with anyone. I didn't want to meet anyone. Um, but, but yeah, it was, uh, it was tough. I um, feel like when it got physical is, is when I realized I needed help because there's a certain taboo uh, that's attached to um, mental health because, um, you know, it's an absolute antithesis, anti, anti, uh, anxiety. it's an absolute anti, anti, uh, antithesis of what athletes try to, try to portray, you know, weakness, we cannot be weak at all. Um, and um, it just, you know, two years into therapy, two years of, of trying to cope, and then finally consulting a doctor, I was diagnosed with clinical depression, high functioning anxiety. Um, following was two years of therapy and medication. And, um, you know, after, after my diagnosis, even before the diagnosis, you know, uh, depression, my depression made me feel like I was, you know, I was tied up in a straight jacket in a soundproof room. I'm screaming and nobody can hear me. Um, it was, you know, things like this, um, experiences like this that kind of made me um, kind of open my eyes to a lot of things. And that's kind of when I decided to start advocating for this because nobody uh, speaks of mental health uh, um, when it comes to athleticism or when it comes to sports or athletes uh, rather. Because, you know, in, in front of everybody's eyes, I was still living the dream. You know, I'm still playing. I'm still competing abroad. There's a lot of pressures that you go through, you know, from family, from yourself. Now, when you're high performing, you don't want to come down level low at any point in time. Um, so there's, uh, sorry, there's a lot of things that one goes through. Anyway, um, moving on, I uh, was made uh, following. I was made. I was captain already, and then da da da. Shit, I forget my life a lot. Okay. This is literally the real example of of, of what somebody uh, with uh, massive anxiety goes through. And if at any point you guys are speaking at a TED Talk some years down the line, don't worry, just take your time with it. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> okay. Um, all right. And so, um, you know, gradually when I started advocating uh, for mental health for athletes, a lot of parents came to me, a lot of um, team players started confiding in me, a lot of foreign athletes got in touch about, you know, how they feel the same way and I feel like, you know, it was a big boat and we were all in it, but we didn't want to identify who was on it. Um, 
so it's it's a collective collective situation that's happening. So many people in this room, I'm pretty sure, have anxiety, um, and that's okay, right? Like, I mean, third TED talk, and I'm still not okay, but that's okay too. Um, all right, guys. So I'm playing now. Um, so from like literally from existential lows, you know, feeling those massive existential lows. I went up, I was called to play the world's lowest altitude football match ever played at the Dead Sea. I played a football match uh, 450 meters below sea level, breaking my first world record. Um, and I was feeling like I was, I, was, I was on top of the world again. And you know, um, from lows to highs, it's fluctuating because, because I believed in transition. Now, um, you know, playing the world record. And then I was in France, I was invited to train in France. And uh, following that soon after was when I broke my two more world records. First one was played the world's, the, the longest football match ever played that lasted about 69 hours. And the next one was a football match with the most number of nationalities. Um, everything's going great. I was in the US also training. Everything's fine. Now, last year I kicked off my own sports academy. Um, it's a professional training academy called the Fortis Sports Academy, and I held my first um, elite training camp for the girls in Hunza who, uh, who were aspiring football players and who would never have gotten a chance to be a part of something like this because we, leave, we have a habit of leaving people marginalized, um, you know, somebody with mental health, somebody from far-flung areas, somebody with cancer. You know, you want to be normal, you want to be accepted, but that's not how it works. It's, it's not how it works. It's not how you will survive. It's not how, yeah, you might survive, but you will not live. Um, so that happened. Now, from, you know, run, 17 years after I was running my, uh, running the top, you know, the most difficult solar distance uh, races to being 28 today, um, like I have to tell you, it has to be, um, I trusted the process. It has to be, a transition. If I ran those marathons like they were sprints, I wouldn't be here. And and because because nothing happens overnight. Tell me what happens overnight. Um, but you have to you have to. I feel like, you know, just this journey has brought me to realize that everybody has the potential. You know, um, everybody in this room has the potential. Everybody has the capacity. And and you know, um, just so much in them that. They can, they can achieve anything. But you know what? The reality is that far few are willing to make that effort. You know, um, far few are willing to commit to risk and do what it takes to be who you want to be. Um, and, um, you know, like I said, you guys have dreams. Everybody has dreams, ideas, passions, all of you in this room. Um, and um, it's real. It's very real, but only if you want to make it real. You know, it's not just going to happen, uh, you know, by a fluke because. The first time I played football in one top score, it was, it felt like a fluke, but then because I put in work, it was not a fluke anymore. So um, I think I'll wrap it up real quick, but leave you guys with two questions. If you ever want, if you ever feel like, you know, this is it for me, or if you get a, if a, if you get a real good hint of um, your purpose, if you have found your true north, ask yourself these two questions. Number one, will I be able to succeed? All right, will I be able to succeed? If so, number two, do I have or will I give it or will I do whatever it takes to make it happen? Because that's, that's the question that you need to ask yourself. Everybody's got the capacity, but will you, will you? Will you do what it takes, whatever it takes to make it happen? If the answer is yes, then you, then you owe it to yourself to give it a try. Thank you guys.